Ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome Dr. Payan. All right. Thanks for watching. And from the producer of Square Root of a Matrix, now comes another special. Today, I will evaluate a matrix raised to the power of another matrix. Whoa! So, and you'll see it's actually a quite a tricky issue. It's not as obvious as you think. So, for example, let's calculate the following. Let's calculate A to the B, where A is, let's see, um, 7 minus 3, 10 and minus 4, and B is 0, 1, 3, minus 2. And so the question is, how would you even evaluate such a thing? Well, we do know how to evaluate the function applied to a matrix. In particular, we know how to evaluate ln of a. And so the question is, then how can we evaluate a to the b? Well, a to the b, you can really think of it as e to the ln of a times b. Or, uh-huh, and here's where the tricky issue lies. Why not e to the b ln of a? In single variables, there, those both give you a to the b. And here's the interesting thing. Neither answer is better than the other. So it turns out for a to the b, there are two definitions. You can either define it as e to the ln of a times b, or e to the b times ln of a. And for example, let's evaluate this thing. Okay, and also give you the other answer, and you'll see in general, they're not the same. And it kind of reminds you of this meme about a dog, because it says, suppose you have a dog here. <laughs> it's my rendition of a dog. How would you dress a dog? Would you dress it like this? Would you put your pants on like this? Or would you put on pants on like that? And well, turns out here there are two equally good answers. So. Here, let's evaluate e to the b of ln of a, and in general, that's a tricky issue, but if a is diagonalizable, it's not that bad, and it turns out a is diagonalizable. So a, again, which is 7 minus 3, 10 minus 4, you can write this as p dp inverse, where p is just 1, 2. 3, 5, and D, it's 1, 0, 2, 0. So, uh, 1, 0, 0, 2. So I will skip this process. It's this process called diagonalization, and there are a bunch of videos on this. But basically, to find D, you find the eigenvalues of A, and then the columns of P are the corresponding eigenvectors. And you can indeed check that 1, 2 is an eigenvector of A, corresponding to 1, and 3, 5 is an eigenvector of A, uh, so yeah, a corresponding to 2. How would that help us? Because look, if you look, if you watch my previous videos, if A is P, D, P inverse, then for example, E to the A is P, E to the D, P inverse, or square root of A is P square root of D, P inverse. In particular, just by heuristic reasoning, you might guess, well, ln of a should be p ln of d p inverse. And since there is no good definition of ln of a here, well, we can actually use this. So, then what is ln of a? That becomes, again, p, which is 1, 3, 2, 5. Yes. And ln of d, so ln of 1, 0, 0, ln of 2, and 1, 3, 2, 5, inverse. And the reason this is nice, ln of 1 is 0, so we really get 1, 3, 2, 5, 0, 0, 0, ln of 2. And remember to find the inverse of a 2 by 2 matrix, you take 1 over the determinant, so 5 minus 6, which is minus 1. So 1 over minus 1. 
and you flip the thing, so 5, 1, minus 3, minus 2. Okay. Oh, sorry, 5, minus 3, minus 2, 1. And then you calculate this, and in the end what you get is ln of 2 times 6, 10, minus 3, minus 5. That's already good, so we calculated ln of a. And now the next thing is we want to multiply it by b to the left. So d ln of a, that is, you know, uh, 0, 1, 3 minus 2, times this constant ln of 2, times 6, 10, minus 3, minus 5. And I believe what you get is 10 minus 5, yep, and then 18 minus 20, so minus 2, and minus 9 plus 10, which is 1. And all this times ln of 2. All right, so we have this matrix, and the next thing is, well, we want to calculate E of that. So what we have to do, we have to expand, we have to diagonalize this matrix, and I've done the calculation. So it turns out 10 minus 5 minus 2, 1. So let's see. Da, da, da. So 10. Minus 5, minus 2, 1. You can write this as, let's say, Q D prime, Q inverse, where Q, I don't know why I write P, Q is the matrix 1, 2, 5, minus 1. So you can check that 1, 2, and 5, 1 are eigenvectors of this matrix, and D is a matrix 0, 0, 0, 11. And what this tells us is that actually B ln of A is then equal to just this matrix, so Q D prime, Q inverse, times, remember, that constant ln of 2. So ln of 2 of 11, 1, 5, 2 minus 1, 0, 0, 0, 11, and 1, 5. 2 minus 1 inverse, and beware, it gets quite messy, so then this ln of 2, you can put it here, so 1, 5, 2 minus 1, 0, 0, 0, ln of 2 times 11, and then the inverse, 1, 5, 2 minus 1 inverse, all right, and lastly, what is a to the b? You just exponentiate that, so a to the b. Using this definition, you get e to the b ln of a. And then you just remember to find the exponential. It's like uh, p e to the d p inverse. So 1, 5, 2 minus 1. And remember, this is a diagonal matrix. So to exponentiate a diagonal matrix, you just exponentiate each diagonal. So e to the 0, 0, 0, e to the ln of 2 times 11. And this inverse, if you want, we can calculate it. So the determinant is minus 11, so minus 1 over 11. Times, so you flip those, minus 1, 1, and then you put minuses there. It looks atrocious, and it is actually atrocious, but uh, this thing with the E's, it turns out it can get simplified here. So we get this 1 over 11, and don't worry, I'll put the minuses there, and then 1, 5, 2, minus 1 something, and then 1, 5, 2, minus 1. Huh, is that true? Uh, yeah, I guess it is here. Well, very nice. Uh, and so, again, 
pure coincidence is usually not the case. And then e to the 0 is 1. And then 0, 0. And this e to the ln of 2 to the 11, you can just write it as 2 to the 11. And then, if you do this calculation, and oh, <laughs> I don't have better things to do, I actually did this calculation, and you get something like 1 over 11 times, I think, 1 plus 5 times 2 to the 12. 5 minus 5 times 2 to the 11. And then minus 2 plus 2 to the 12. And minus 10 minus 2 to the 11. Ta-da! That is your a to the b if you take this definition. And uh, if you want, I mean, Wolfram Alpha calculated that to, for me. We get 1 over 11 of 20,481 minus 10,235 minus 4,094 and 2,058. That is e to the b ln of a. And again, the idea is we just write a to the b as this. We diagonalize to find ln of a. We multiply it by b. And then we exponentiate. And we get this. And you may ask, what about the other definition? What if you use e to the ln of a times b times b? Well, we still have ln of a and b which I like to remind you, so ln of a was this thing, ln of 2 times 6, 10, minus 3, minus 5, and then 0, 1, 3, minus 2. And if you calculate that, you get ln of 2, then minus 9, 12, minus 15, 20. And if you do the same procedure, you diagonalize this, you exponentiate, and you calculate this, then we actually get a different answer than e to the ln of a times b. Turns out, at least what I got was 1 over 11, 20 minus 9 times 2 to the 11, minus 12 plus 3, 2 to the 13, 15 minus 15 times 2 to the 11, and minus 9 plus 5 times 2 to the 13. And just to convince you that we don't get the same answer, is 1 over 11 minus 18,412, 24,564, and minus 30,705, and 40,000. <laughs> 951. So, uh, in particular, it's over 9,000, right? So, so, yes, and I'm saying also in particular, compare this to those things, those numbers, they're not the same. So, in general, e of ln of a times b is not e to the uh, b times ln of a. It would be interesting to see when we do have that they commute. I mean, of course, if you calculate a to the a, that would be e to the a ln of a, and that's the same thing as e to the ln of a times a. So this is well defined, and in fact, you can use the same procedure to calculate a to the a, a to the a to the a, or whatever. But for the other ones, it's not quite clear. And of course, another question is, well, when is a to the b plus c? When is that a to the b times a to the c? And what this is, it's again, let's say e to the ln of a. I'm oh, sorry, uh, b plus c ln of a. Well, that's e to the b ln of a plus c ln of a. So that's always true, but remember this property of matrix multiplication, exponentiation, it only works if those two matrices commute. So you need to make sure that those two commute, and then what you get is if they commute, you do get that it's E of B ln of A times E of C ln of A. Again, if they commute, 
and that would be, if you want, in our definition, uh, a to the b times a to the c. Okay. So very important. So you basically laws of algebra don't hold anymore for matrices, and they're badly behaved. All right, I hope you like this little excursion, and if you want to see more math, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.